everybody. We are back in the studio. Yes. Hey, Josh. Hey, Gurry. Hey, Gary. Hey, Bron- Brontonaut. Brontonaut. That's Hello. A fun. Hello, That's, everybody. It's like a brontosaurus astronaut is what I think of. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Th- totally floating yeah, with a little just like a, bubble yeah. helmet. Exactly. Glad to think, glad to know our brains were in the same. Linked. Yeah. Linked. Think, Psychically yeah. linked. We almost matched again today. Almost. But not quite. No. <laughs> I, by that, I mean not at all. I, I, I own very little plaid. <laughs> very, and by very little, I mean none. Ugh. I'm sorry. Rude. It is. It's terribly rude. It was completely on me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Joe so says, music is perfectly synced between my Facebook device and my computer, and they're not actually synced. Oh. Penny Apple Luminous in That's stereo. Cool. That's cool. All right. Very cool. So, so I don't think we actually stream in stereo, do we? I don't know. No. Imagine if it was just like my voice coming out of your um, left. left ear and your voice coming out of their right ear. Like that into their, really not out cool. of their ears, into their ears, <laughs> going into their ears. That would be cool though, because it'd be like right, it'd be like That'd sitting be right in the middle of us. It would be like weird. part of a conversation. <laughs> we could ASMR it. No. Could, yeah. So <laughs> tonight, tapping the tapping. We are going to be painting. You would just do the, the dry brushing. You just do dry brush up next to the microphones. <laughs> yep, that would be great. We should definitely do that one day. But we won't do that. So, what yeah. are we painting? We are we are painting today. Where's the, where's the thing that says exactly what it is? It's okay. Corvus Belli Infinity. Yep. So yes, in, Infinity Infinity. So I'm painting uh, something from the Hakislam faction. I'm painting a Ghulam infantry model. So it's this cool uh, cool little dude with a pistol and backpack and pouch. And I am painting Yu Ching. Very cool. Who seems to be a really cool fighter of some kind. Has a little thing on I the think, back. I think the second second thing down. So mine has like Hakislam and Gulam infantry. Yeah. So you have Hakislam uh, Yu Jing and says um, Zanshi. Zanshi. Okay. Yeah. Cool, so if you play Infinity, you know exactly what a song she is. I hope. And I hope you can pronounce it. <laughs> that didn't have a pronunciation guide. They told me how to pronounce her name, but they did not tell me how to pronounce any of the other Mandarin words on the other here. Words on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. But yeah, I'm going to try to use all of the paints from the set that it came with. So it has a bunch of Vallejo paints. And I'm going to see what we can do with those. So I will try to match. For once, I will play within the guidelines. Nice. Yeah. That's gonna, that should be fun to see you how far along, how far during the show. Like at which point you go, <laughs> no. That, I'll just, the guidelines are out the window I'll again. I'll just dip her in a shifter at the end. Right, okay. By the ankle, like like how you would dip uh, Achilles into the uh, river sticks. The river sticks, uh, right. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. And then, so every part of her will be protected except for her ankle. <laughs> It'll be fine. Her, yeah. Excellent. That will be good. So how ever, is everyone else in the chat? How's everybody doing? Um, As I shake up <laughs> my paints. Jason says, in space, no one can hear you go extinct. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Betsy. Uh, I think we said hey to Sean and JT earlier. I hope we did. If we didn't, hi. Uh, Sean says, nice models. They are nice models. All the models that uh, the folks at Corvus Belly put out are very, uh, very beautifully detailed. So it's, uh, again, it's a real treat to kind of paint, spend some time painting um, painting these minis. I think um, what I'm excited to do, possibly in the, in the new year, is paint up some um, models. They have a new... Um, process that they're doing for some of their larger models uh, called CO-Cast. What's that? Um, which is a um, basically it's a, like a thermoplastic and it, uh, it's a thermoplastic, it's an injected thermoplastic but rather than being like a 
high impact polystyrene plastic like uh, Games Workshop or weird miniatures for Malifaux, um, that kind of thing. It is injected into a, um, a silicon mold. Okay. So it's a little bit more like the process for creating metal miniatures, but it's just done with, rather than being done with like molten metal, it's done with molten plastic. That's cool. Um, so, and of course, like, Infinity is known for its finely detailed miniatures. So I'm excited to see what the, uh, how the, the thermoplastics come out and how detailed they are. Because sometimes, I, I think the earlier, um, earlier runs of that, type, that technology um, have been a little bit soft on the details. But uh, I think in, in recent years, those sort of details have um, improved quite a bit. I mean, we've seen some fantastic detail in the uh, Monster Fight Club uh, cyberpunk minis. Yeah. So that's that kind of, uh, the same kind of process that's, um, that they're using there. So, oh, there he is. I'm going to do most of it like the box, like, basically his uh, armor and uh, fatigues. But then I think rather than that um, green, I'm going to put some orange in there on the artwork. This guy, where is he? There we go. This guy here. I think it looks pretty neat with those flashes of um, ivory and, uh, and orange. So I'm going to do, go with that kind of look. Should be fun. I'm just going to let that dry a little bit. And everyone has to excuse me. I'm going to have to dig around in my box a little bit for paints. But um, usually my the paints that I use all the time are at the top of the box. But on my way here tonight, when I was still in my neighborhood, uh, somebody decided that running across the street was a, without looking was a great idea. So I had to slam on my brakes. It was a jogger, somebody jogging along. Probably had their music going and was completely oblivious to where they were running. So I stopped suddenly and the box went forward and all the paint spilled into the, the footwell. Of the, I shouldn't the laugh, side. but that's funny. Pardon? I said I shouldn't laugh, but it is funny. It is funny because nobody <laughs> died. Yes, um, actually, yeah, that's what makes it a funny story. Yes, it just became uh, considerably inconvenient for me. So now I'm into rubbish. Josh Potter says, painting infinity? Sounds like it's going to take forever. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, Josh Potter, you no, have I like no it. That's idea. Funny. How this JT says, no painting tonight, dealing with stupid sciatica. Oh. Sciatica. Mm. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So I'm laying down and watching the show before football. Cool. Nice. I okay. appreciate that where your pre-football <laughs> <laughs> entertainment. Who doesn't get in the mood for football by painting minis? You have to. You have to have both the nerd and the jock. Yeah. Like balance going on. You do. You know. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, you do. It's definitely good. Uh. Something else we got. Um, plus 15 points for the correct mythology reference. Haha. Uh -huh. What was that again? Because of the dipping. <laughs> the, the dipping Achilles. of the heel oh, okay, cool. and the Achilles. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. I got a whole major in English. <laughs> good evening, Tim. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Jason says, paint dilution question. What consistency are you looking for base coating and glazing? Okay. So if you want to... Zoom in here a little bit. So basically, what I had here was uh, the owner primed the miniatures black. So I was starting with a very dark um, primer that coat. That was chaos, chaos Pardon? black. Ka yeah, chaos black. Game social um, Citadel chaos black primer. Um, so, and I was using the uh, game opaque, extra opaque color, so the heavy brown. So that's what I've got out of my palette here. Uh, so you can see that's quite 
thick and a little bit goopy. Yeah. Um, so in the in the middle, it's nice and goopy there, but around the edge, it's a little bit thinner. So I got a little bit, just a little bit of water, maybe not that much, and started pulling out to the edge and getting that kind of consistency. So because it's uh, this is an uh, one of those extra opaque colors, it means it has a lot of um, uh, pigment in it. So uh, basically, most of this is, is really one coat. There are some areas, you'll notice sort of around the edges there, where I might have uh, thinned it a little bit more and it uh, will require a second just touch up coat, which is kind of what I'm doing now, um, just to demonstrate more than anything else. Um, what I could have done is not worried about that and just popped on the, let me turn that around. There we go, uh, the Game Wash uh, Umber. I wish I just could have put that over the top of that to um, shade the, do some shading in the recesses there uh, on the that heavy brown. Um, and it was all, that would also tint the top coat, uh, top coat, I guess, top surfaces. So I wouldn't really need to. Make sure I got a solid coat on there. I can just come. I leave that in shadow. Oh yeah. So I do that, and for glazing, um, we'll probably come back and do a little bit of glazing later in the in the show. But for glazing, uh, let's have a look at on the palette here. I'll take a little bit of the um, dark sand I've got. Just pop it there. Um, I've got quite a bit of water on my brush. But can you see that? You can see, you can see how thin that is yeah. there. So some something start, when if you're doing some glazing, start around that sort of um, opacity and that um, viscosity. So very, like quite thin okay. there. Um, so because you can always build up. If you start too thick, it's tough, to, you can't take, it's tough to take that layer back off kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, it depends on the area of glazing, the size of it, and the amount of tinting that you need to do to that, that area. But um, yeah, somewhere around that. I think people often talk about, when they're talking about paints and applying paints, they talk about things like the consistency of milk. And then you go, is that full fat milk? Is that skim milk? Is that half and half? Is it cream? What are you? Condensed you? milk, obviously. Condensed milk. Condensed milk. Which is what we've got here. It's like oh, thick bleh, sludge. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Yep. So you're generally trying to avoid that unless it's uh, you're gooping on like texture paint onto a base or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is almost almost water for the that sort of glaze. But again, just try it out at the thinnest. If you need to add a little bit more to it to Thicken that up a little bit. Give that a go. So hopefully that has answered your question, Jason. Um, he says, I, I always feel like my paint is either too thick or too thin and I can't find that sweet spot. It is really tough because, oh, how about that? I'm gonna move that away. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, so, um, yeah, it can be really tough because paints will almost always come out of the pot at different consistencies. You won't be able to pick out like four paints, like these four paints won't all come out of the pot at the same consistency. Yeah. So you, can, they, you can't apply a sort of a blanket, always add this much water kind of thing. So yeah, just um, I think probably if you, you get some miniatures that have large flat areas, so you can just experiment with how the how the paints react at different thicknesses, and just just use it as a study piece. Don't try and finish it or anything. Um, if you've got a dragon with wings, has huge wing surfaces, you just practice on those. You've got lots of surface there. You can you got four different sides to the wings, um, but that's what I'd recommend you do is just do a practice exercise where it's all it's focused on learning and becoming comfortable and take notes if you if you want to 
you want to. You don't have to take notes, but it can be a good idea to, to do that. And yes. Uh, <laughs> what cool wet. That's a strange. Oh, this all this talk of texture makes me think of like this one art class where everyone told me that the texture should be like pancake batter. Okay. But depending on how you make pancakes, for sure. That is very different and I could never make the texture right. Yep. <laughs> the, uh, it was for clay. Yep. So or plaster. Yeah. It's, it's, you're running the whole range there from like flapjacks to yeah. crepes, right? Yeah, and like, I which, worked during my <laughs> professor's office hours, so I couldn't go in. Right. And I ended up um, having to redo the project again, still messed it up, went out by more materials, brought it back, called a friend who had um, taken um, multiple sculpture classes before, because I'd worked with clay, but I'd never worked with plaster. Right. Had him come over to my house. We tried again with him help, help, helping me. It still turned into a weird, like, pillowy texture. Okay. It was very strange. We couldn't get it out of the bucket. It dried in the bucket. We finally, we were like, fine, it'll dry in the bucket. We'll get it out of the bucket, and then we'll carve it from that. Right. And we finally did, and um, it was, like, past to do. Like, my professor didn't yep. want it anymore, so we dumped it out by the by the dumpsters, and there it stayed for two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Just a testament to my failures in the elements. Somebody somebody thought it was an installation. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and by somebody, I mean the, uh, the folks who collected the trash. <laughs> they did not want to touch it. <laughs> yeah. Look at him go, oh, this should have been a... Should have been pancake consistency, but Should obviously it was pillowy. It was not pan. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand that. that yeah. I just <laughs> to this day, every time I make pancakes, <laughs> I just think of <laughs> that. JT says, um, "I've always heard of skim milk consistency for airbrushing." Yep. Yeah. Josh says. I've never painted with milk. It doesn't seem very color fast. It, it's not, but um, you get a complete rather than a like like a visual experience. Like you wait a few days, and you have that um, scratch and ooh, smell. Olfactory experience. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Yes. Don't do it. Not even with powdered milk. Is that, you see, are you talking from experience, Dave? That seems like no. Milk. I've never actually done that. I can just imagine doing it. <laughs> How terrible it might be. Yeah, that's like my mom saw someone. My mom's an art, an artist, yep. and um, an art teacher, and she saw someone like talking about all organic paints, paints, which basically meant. This person was like taking food and painting with them. Okay. And she was like, "That's disgusting. <laughs> Don't do that." Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's <laughs> like you can things that you can paint with. You like can flowers. paint with food. And you can, there's. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it won't last in any way. Sure. Even if you put it in glass and like put shellac over it, it'll it will deteriorate. Yeah. Pretty quickly. <laughs> I can see that happening. Okay. Appreciate how we're all just like, there's better things. Okay. We just went quiet for a minute. We Not did. We were, we were all contemplating. We were like, mm, milk paints. I know. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The rage. Yeah. So, Gretchen, what? how are you tackling your mini? What are you okay, planning so, on doing first? So far, I started with her face first, and I actually really, really like how her face came out. For So, like, I actually got, like her eyes to look correct I don't it's so teeny I don't know if you can actually make anything out there other than some blobby colors yeah. but um, I basically did her face the same way I would contour makeup 
Um, and then I blended it out from there. So I started with darker colors, like under the cheeks and up around the forehead. And then I took lighter colors and I did the forehead and the top of the cheeks and the chin. And I took a little bit of red for the, like, very blended down to be a more natural tone. And did the apples of her cheeks and the tip of her nose. And then I took some highlight color and I did <laughs> where where all the TikTok tutorials say to do highlights <laughs> up on the top of the cheekbones and the nose and the chin and whatnot. And um, it actually looks fairly nice. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like, ooh, she knows how to contour. Look at that. Um... But most importantly, I actually painted her eyeballs this time. Normally, I don't typically paint eyeballs. Okay. Um, I just do, like, eyebrows and then do a darker color in there if it's teeny tiny. But yep. she had um, a sculpt for her eyes, so it, it wouldn't really look right in my mind. Yep. Um, so I did, and I was able to get her eyes to look like eyeballs. And not like she's cross-eyed or weird. And I think that's what makes it. <laughs> that's amazing. You, <laughs> you should probably stop there. No. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I moved on to her hair. Side. Oh, no, no. I didn't want to it mess it up. Done. <laughs> it's like done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice work. So I'm like, yeah, good start to the night. Good job. <laughs> Go me. Snaps. That's good. Very cool. What are you doing, Dave? Yep, but with uh, no, now that uh, so I put that wash over it, the uh, the umber wash, um, just for a little bit of extra uh, depth in the shadows there. So coming back and highlighting with the uh, the heavy brown, and I'm kind of um, just working out where the which areas I need to paint with the brown and which ones I need to do with the. Um, like a lighter version, so I need to start mixing the um, dark sand into this heavy brown for the highlight on the armor plates. But there's, there's a lot of detail, I, as is to be expected with an Infinity Miniature, but there's a lot of detail in here and a lot of uh, seams. I think in uh, the Infinity universe, they're, they're very big on making clothing out of really small pieces of fabric so there's like little seams everywhere. zigzag seams everywhere yeah so it just makes her a little bit of a uh, oh, I and mean, that's one of the things that adds to that detail that we were talking about before it um, means that the, the highlights are um, don't go as like far as you uh, as you might think, it's little little lots of little tiny highlight lines. I think I once I got that worked out, it should be okay. And I have a feeling I'll probably do. I'm probably going to save his face for the uh, towards the end, so, so I can focus on this. Um, all this his fatigues and uh, the armor on the plates that he has but uh, yeah it's going to be nice and I just realized as well that because it is such a, a nice tiny miniature I got the opportunity to uh, to emphasize the contrast in certain areas so to make sure that I don't take my highlights up too high on the, the legs <laughs> save those for the shoulders and up around the around the face and the head just so it gives him extra dimension this is a tiny little dude yeah. so small so tiny but there we go so I think last week, pretty sure last week I mentioned that I'd um, sent off the files for the Art Of books to the printers. Yeah. Did I do that? You did. Cool. Excellent. 
and uh, this week I got to send off the um, the cover files. That's fun. So the cover files are all done. They're all approved. Everything's nice there. But the uh, the craziest thing about them, from a uh, sort of design perspective, is that I'm doing silver foil on them. So it's a printed cover with silver foil in certain areas. Basically, mm-hmm. all of the like the logo and the uh, artist name and that kind of thing is all in silver. So I have to design the cover as I would normally do it, and then provide two different files. One where I'd removed all of the the logos and the artist name so those areas were blank and such they just had the back the background yeah and uh, then one file that was just the logo and the the name and that sort of thing which is going to be the silver fo- silver foil file so it was a little bit of a freak out to look at that and go is this gonna be okay is this all gonna line up is it gonna work but thankfully, this morning I got the uh, proofs back saying it'll look basically like this. It's like everything is in the right place. Good. You could feel comfortable about it. It was nice. Just a little bit nerve wracking. Which has meant that I've been thinking about it a lot. <laughs> Very excited. That and uh, and then some painting as well. That's Get good. Mess around. How about you? What have you been up to? I have a new kitten. Oh, you have a new kitten. I have a new cool. kitten. Big cat has a friend. Oh my goodness, how are they yeah. uh, how are they getting on? Um, <laughs> so it's ex- it's interesting. So he was found in the woods, um, by a friend of mine who has a falconry apprenticeship. She okay. went out hunting, and um. They, they found three little kittens, and so she asked if I could take one, and I said, sure, because I was thinking about getting another Siamese cat, okay. um, but I was like, here's a free kitten, and my husband knew I was thinking about getting another Siamese cat, and then I came home with a free kitten, so really, I saved us money <laughs> that we could have spent on a breeder cat, yep. um, and so I bring this kitten home, and... He can't really be fully with Calcifer. He has to quarantine because he's a little sure. little wildling found in the woods. Little yep. dude. Um, he doesn't have fleas or ticks or anything. He went to like an initial vet visit, but uh, until he gets his next one tomorrow and dewormer can take effect and all that kind of all good the fun stuff. stuff. Yep. Um, they've just very had limited interactions. But the first day, Calcifer hissed and was very, very angry. And was a big, angry, just ball of fur. Kind of like, oh my god, I thought I was baby. I'm no longer baby. (laughs) I'm still baby. I'm the baby. And then the second day, he was kind of like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't... I think... I think maybe this thing plays. (laughs) I think maybe this thing will wrestle with me. And then the third day, the kitten was finally feeling a little bit more um, spunky. Uh, So the kitten tried to play with him, and he went from, I'm baby, to, he can be baby, I'm chaos. (laughs) Um, So he is super invested in playing with the kitten, yeah. And he, he can't really play with the kitten right now because he's not allowed to really interact with the kitten yep. until the kitten is, um, you know, worm-free and all that kind awesome, of stuff. Awesome. Has his, yep. Yeah, finishes up with the vaccinations and stuff. But he desperately wants to roughhouse with the kitten. The problem I have <laughs> is that Calcifer is 18 pounds right. of roughhouse. And he... His paw is like this big. Right. The size of the, the kitten's head. And the kitten's paw is about the size of a dime. <laughs> right. Yep. And the other day, I had them in the same room, kind of like, so we get used to each other, and they were bapping each other a little bit. And the kitten, in like a moment 
of just like full kitten, just just wired <laughs> energy, decided he was gonna run under the bed. Right. Because there's no way Calcifer can fit under the bed. He's wrong. Calcifer right. can definitely. Calcifer's liquid. Yeah. He fits <laughs> a lot of places. Liquid and chaos. <laughs> liquid chaos. Um, so he made a run for it. And so Calcifer decided this was his moment. He, he decided that in this moment, he was going to make a flying leap tackle. Right. And you just see 18 pounds of cats starfishing in the air. Just if, <laughs> if this was a cartoon, you would have like the little the little one running, and yep. you would just see like the little shadow from above get bigger. Right. And, bigger. <laughs> and with reflexes I didn't know I had, I swooped Calcifer midair up and was just yep. like, nope, not today. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Nope. Wait nope. like nope. three more weeks. Wait till he gets sturdy. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you can't kill your new best friend. Um, the so Calcifer is very invested in having a playmate, a wrestle buddy, right. um, kind of thing. If they were actual children, it would be like the older sibling who wrestles until the younger one gets hurt and is like, "Don't tell mom." Don't tell mom. You're okay. Don't tell mom. Uh, yep. That's the exact vibe I get out of it. The dog. Um, came into the room, realized that there was a small thing, yep. and then immediately left the room. <laughs> He's like, you've brought another home. He doesn't dislike the new kitten, but yep. he also is like, it's small. Ah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my husband at first was like, what? When did this happen? And I was like, you were asleep on the couch. Things happen when Rule you one. sleep on the couch. Be very careful about taking naps. <laughs> <laughs> um, you should know when we first started dating, you left for a week and came back to a fish. I don't <laughs> know what to tell you. Um, but uh, he, we decided to call the kitten Smog, uh, Smaug. Um, and at first he said the kitten was too small to be a dragon. And then yeah. I called the vet to make the appointment, and I told the vet that he said that the kitten was too small to be a dragon. And the vet said, he is not too small to be a dragon. <laughs> Very distressed. Yeah. And so um, my husband said, fine, Smaug was the smallest of the dragons anyway. We just have to pronounce it the way Tolkien intended. Right. Um, <laughs> There we go. So I was like, all right, all right, that's fine. Nice. <laughs> that's cool. Um, but Excellent. So you have a new kitten. We have a new kitten, and my Christmas tree will not survive this year, I don't think. He's very snuggly. He has Boy, lots I... of opinions, most of them about wanting to be snuggled exactly right this moment now. Right. That doesn't sound like a kitten at all. Oh, wait. He just wants to purr all the time, always. <laughs> and I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So there we go. It's coming along. I'm going to try and get it. There we go. Towards the center of the, the screen. You can see I'm starting to uh, build up the, um, the fabric. All the fabric. So now I'm building up the uh, armor plates on top, but working through from the same base color that uh, the heavy brown on the base there. Um, oop! I think we missed a few things in the uh, in the chat. Did I see some Rembrandts? Yeah, I was yep. just talking art. You All don't right. have to read it. Nice. <laughs> just noting out art wise. Cool. Excellent. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Considering the conservation efforts for these old pieces, I wonder what they will do for what will they do for our miniature works in five hundred years? <laughs> will they find them? The metal ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Probably yeah. they could. They'll they find could the plastic find ones too. 
it'll you can be, find the, the plastic resin. ones or the metal ones, depending. It'll be like with, like, even if the paint is chipped, it'll be like with, like, how original Greek statues were originally painted. Yeah. Right. And so, at first, if it's anything like how it went with that, people will be like, look at this fine art, and they'll be, like, well-known for being not painted. And they'll be like, people just like miniature things. Woohoo. Yep. And then, uh, except the inter- if the internet exists, they'll just be like this. Um, <laughs> but then they'll be able to like figure out what the what the paint colors were originally were through uh, the magic of technology, like technology, and being able to see things. And then someone will track that down to an old blog and be like, <laughs> "I found it." And you know, someone's entire artist science degree will. <laughs> Yep. be irrelevant but it, you know it'll be fun and there'll, there'll be things like uh, and they even had video shows where people would talk about the uh, the show was focused on the the care and breeding of cats yet they would paint <laughs> miniatures while discussing the care and breeding of cats yeah, so confusing yeah. I hope that's I hope that's how it goes <laughs> that would be cool here they had shows watching paint dry. It's really weird. Yeah. Used to be a very, very beloved pastime. <laughs> Indeed. I still like the idea of like some person doing their whole thesis on on just like figuring out what paint colors were used, only to have like a little brother or something be like, "Look at this cool." Like pin um Instagram I found from five hundred years ago. <laughs> Dang it. Because somebody provides their recipe. Yeah. Yep. That's gonna be the cool thing in five hundred years, is that all of this kind of stuff is archived in a way that's never been done before. So like We just really have to hope there's continuing continuing electricity between now and then. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I'm sure there will be any in number of interesting ways that that kind of stuff would be saved or pulled from. Or yep, could be good. Oh, I don't know why there's slime. I'm not sure. Just taking offense to my uh, my band aid. Band aid. I cut my thumb this afternoon. You can't have a band aid. Don't do that. I'm sorry, everybody. Did you consider not cutting your thumb? Somebody, um, we probably should have put up like a uh, sudden motion warning. Yeah. Like. <laughs> there we go. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Jason, when we were talking about uh, consistency, you can see that um, we've got a bit of a sort of gloopy blob there because the, um, we're getting a little bit of separation in the paint, but it's drawing uh, moisture through from the um, through the membrane. Okay. So I haven't been dipping my paintbrush in water too often. So I can just do that and add a little bit of water. I don't need to add too much there, just to make sure that I'm not um, putting it on too thick for the highlights. So what I'm trying to do there now is just find those, um, hit those uh, highlight spots up on the shoulders, get both of those on the um, gauntlets and then on the, the knee pads are the places I want to show off there. And for that, I'm going to rummage and see if I can find, oh, there it is. That was lucky. Wasn't even rummaging. Wasn't even rummaging. It was there on the top. A little bit of ivory. Surprise, surprise. So just mix some of that into the dark sand. And keep the highlighting going. There we go. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay, we're still... Still in the art conservation <laughs> chat. There. OK. 
Okay. So there's still some little you can see there on the on the knee pad, just picking that out. Um, little spot across the top. There. Let me see. And now I can start to I'll go up to the top. Those shoulder pads. We decided to do basically all of his torso is in the um, the lighter sand colors but because he's got um, backpack straps and he's got his arm across in front of him um, it won't show up too much only when you start to see the back and look at that where you see the uh, these extra highlights in those certain areas and with this just doing a little bit of mixing on the fly so a little bit of this uh, dark sand back into the mix on the side there. But I won't take it up too high in that sh those shadow areas there underneath his arm. Maybe just a little edge along there so you know that it's not a different material. Like that. Okay. I think that's going to work out pretty well. And because all these edges are really crisp, it takes edge highlighting really nicely. How is your Yujing, Yujing uh, Mini coming along? It's going pretty good. I got a base coat down of kind of that dark green. Cool. Um, for her suit, and now I'm getting the armor done. I'm using the um, Scrofulous Brown, which is kind of more of like a okra kind of color. Oh. Like that yellowy, like, not orange, but marigold. That's a better way of putting it. <laughs> um, so I'm using that as kind of like a mid-tone for the armor, since it's all yellow. Okay. And I don't, I want to have something down so that when I use that brighter yellow on it uh, for highlighting and stuff, it has something to show up on. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm going to use that darker um, orange to kind of get into some of the bits there for some shading. Uh, but, yeah, so far oh. not too shabby. I don't, I don't dislike how this is coming, a, coming along at all. The That's only good. difficult bit that I'm finding is um, sometimes with her pose, I can't always see exactly uh, what I'm doing. You kind of have to get some odd angles on it. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, not too bad. Okay. Looking good. Um, Casey said it's a good thing you practice with swords and not big black arrows. <laughs> Did you know there's a toy soldier museum in Louisville, Kentucky? And the Marks Toy Museum is in Moundsville, West Virginia. I did not know that at all. Toy Soldier Museum. That's gonna be interesting. That would be cool. Yeah. Is that primarily the uh, like the original like tin soldiers, the Britons, that kind of thing? I just I wonder. All the stuff that was painted uh, in very glossy enamels in the uh, well for a good chunk of the twentieth uh, century. Curious. I, uh, I once had a boss uh, when I worked at Games Workshop who his mother had a job on the Britain's toy soldier production line. So she would paint, uh, it was her job to paint miniatures all day, paint toy soldiers. <laughs> but this was a little bit easier. It was basically, yeah, like paint them all bright gloss red, paint the pants black, paint the boots black, paint the little fur. Because they're all 
English soldiers, of course, but uh, yeah, it was uh, that was kind of how he he got interested in toy soldiers. That's and how really he ended cool. Up working for Games Workshop, yeah. It's like wow, that is crazy. So what I'm doing um, here is just a little bit of feathering on the shoulder pad. So we're doing these very soft brush strokes. Initially when I do the highlight with the uh, ivory, it was a little bit too stark at the back. So I came in and painted back in on that this section here. Doing that feathering with the, uh, the brush. Can't see too well on the screen, but not too bad, but it gives you the right idea. Looking good. I think I was to go lighter on the uh, fatigues. You might look a little bit more like House Atreides <laughs> from the uh, new Dune film, based on the microsecond. Did that come out? Sort of things. Already? Uh, no. Tomorrow? Well, in the in the U.S. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. So. Gotcha. Can I say, the, I'm pretty sure my husband would have been like, this is... Because I know I'm seeing it a week late. Right. I'm seeing it on Monday. Monday afternoon. So yeah, we can't talk about it next week. I'm sorry, Dave. We can talk about it Oh, November. we can certainly talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're worried about spoilers... Oh yeah, we already talked about this. We I know let you know. Yeah, there, there's a book, right? Yeah, no, you're right. We talked <laughs> Written, about this. Written by a guy called Frank Herbert. <laughs> there's... There's no such thing. Well, it's more that I want to... Published about 50 to, years ago. I don't want you to ruin it, Dave. <laughs> the fun parts. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can talk about it. Well, we'll just keep it to the uh, to the things that were in the, the trailer. How about that? But, okay. uh You can tell me if, like, the fight scenes are good. The fight scenes are going to be amazing. <laughs> okay. There's like I, I have a, I had a psychic vision. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was it was called the trailers. The trailers. <laughs> Dave Hummel, I may or may not have seen it already. Awesome, that's How? cool. Hi, Ashlyn. Welcome. Um. Yeah, a uh, friend of mine in uh, Columbus, Can't no Cincinnati. Say. That's what I thought. Was that? <laughs> Dave yes. Hummel says I can't say. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, I can't say. Yeah, um, a friend of mine uh, in Cincinnati said, uh, like posted on mine the other day, I finally got around to seeing the new Dune film. Oh, gosh. And I was like, uh, how? It's not released until October 22nd in the US. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I thought it was out already. A friend of mine from Cinemark had a spare ticket and he brought me along. <laughs> like that was an advanced screening my friend oh. <laughs> you lucky lucky guy wow well done but it's um in uh it's been a, like open in europe for the last four weeks oh wow i think and the Why? uk for the last two or so so yeah i think it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm very excited for it but uh yeah, it's going to be good. But I am a, one of the things I'm really excited to see is the sort of the reimaginings of all the um, the uniforms, the outfits, the just the overall look, getting the like the Villeneuve treatment. It's so good, so good. But uh, yeah. I said I was going to do some orange, didn't I? I think so. I think so. I'm going to, now it's time to find out where I'm going to do the orange. And I did bring... brought some of the orange uh, air paints Ooh. that I used on the, the containers that I showed last week on the, on the show. So I'm going to mess around with these. So even though they're formulated for thrown through an airbrush, I'm going to uh, 
try painting them on and see how that goes. If it doesn't work, I do have some uh, non-air orange to, um, to back them up. <laughs> Just in case. Here we go. Okay. It's a lot brighter. But it gets a little sh shadowy bits. I don't have to go back through and touch up some of the green bits again, but such is the cost. Yep. How's she looking? She's actually she's coming coming to wait. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ha -ha. Oh. <laughs> Cool. So I picked out where the orange yellow bits of her armor are. Right. Right. And I'll go the, uh, through and now I'm going to make them look pretty and uh, highlight and shade and whatnot until they're a nice, nice little yellow. And then I'm going to go back, touch up little bits, mostly around her chest plate where I was getting all around the gun. Right. Um, and then go in with some blue where she has a lot of straps and a few little armor pieces that are blue and then uh, paint her gun. And that's my plan. Cool. That would be good. So. But her face turned out very decent, and that makes me happy. Hooray! So there we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to go along with, uh, I've got some of the uh, molten orange air paints. Um, you see on the palette here, that's quite, quite thin. Not surprising for paint that's designed to go through an airbrush, but um, I haven't actually added any water to that at all, so you can see how that is. But at the same time, right next to it, another paint that is uh, quite a bit thinner. So again, two paints, same range, different uh, consistencies out of the pot. Just the way it goes. So I'm just pick out a couple of areas that could be um, either patches on his fatigues or additional pieces of um, sort of flash overlaid. Get that. Um, orange look and undoubtedly I'm going to go back over to the brown in some of these areas. We can always go back and touch those up. If they can keep those confined to the to the shadows. So and one on his left leg there, an armband and uh, yeah I think that should work pretty well. So let's try with the uh, this one is lava orange. And just put this on very carefully. Again, I haven't thinned this down any further, just using that same same consistency. It's working all right. I think um, we'll see when it, it dries because generally it will dry a little bit darker. But if we need to, we can always jump to this um, fiery or, or orange fire for the game color range. Or we'll mix the two together. Sometimes it's all about that experimenting, right? Right. Indeed. I was going to say, have you seen footage of the uh, volcano that's erupting in Italy at the moment? I say, which one? There's one in Japan, there's one in Hawaii, Ooh. and there's one in uh, there's one in Italy. I have not seen the Japan or Hawaii ones. 
I've only seen the Italy ones. Yeah, we got her. Hmm? Mount Etna. Is it Etna? They call it Mount Etna. The, the one that's erupting in Italy? Yep. Okay. I didn't realize it was Etna. Well, uh, maybe. Hmm? It's on the island of Palma. It's a little unsure. But I think uh, Leon is doing some quick typing. Boop 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 <laughs> research. A little bit of quick research. The reason I mention it is um, I've been seeing it the last couple of mornings on the news, and uh, there'll be somebody sort of just on the edge of the exclusion zone, and there's like lava spurting out behind them, and they're talking about it and saying, "Yeah, people have had to evacuate this area," and that sort of thing. And there was one where they one thing where they showed um, like a yard. A walled yard with, that had three dogs in it. Oh yeah, they're trying to rescue some dogs yep. with drones. With drones, yep. They've been dropping food in, food and water in with drones as well. Oh, gosh. And it's like you want to pick up a dog and <laughs> extract it from that situation with a drone. Yeah, you need a pretty big drone. Yeah, so they're they're coming up. They're going to use two drones, and they're they're working with people for um, coming up with a way to try it. Um, it's technically illegal. Dude, technically what? It's technically illegal okay. for them to do it. So they have to get special permission from the government to be able to carry um, live animals via drone. Right. Okay. But their argument is, well, they'll die anyway. So yeah. if we don't, like... If they die via us helping them versus just leaving them. Yeah. Yep. Either way, it's an unpleasant, you know, end for the pups. Yep. Might as well attempt to, to rescue them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. When you just mentioned then that they were going to use two drones. Yeah. It immediately made me think of um, the Holy Grail, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, mm. talking about the coconuts. Mm. How did they get here? Well, migrating swallows. I got into a swallow just gri- <laughs> gripped it in its, its feet and carried the whole coconut here. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe, maybe two of them strung a lion between them. <laughs> it's like, they're going to do the exactly same thing. The, the, exactly what they plan to do. Yeah. I hope they call the drone Swallow 1 and Swallow 2. Fantastic. Okay. So, yep. Those orange flashes are working pretty well. Just going to add a little bit of dark brown along the edge there. Let's see. There we go. Just because at the moment, the, uh, the brown tone that I've got on the edge of the fatigues here is similar to the edge of the uh, like the orange tone so I'm just going to break them up tonally a little bit by just painting in a shadow between the two so I'll help that orange pop out a little more Did I say I was going to do the face last? I don't know. I think I did. But I don't think I will now. I'm going to change my mind on that. Come back and do that another time. Um, did you, uh, <laughs> they almost said it was fun. Fantastic. Excited. Uh, Josh Potter says, the Fraser Museum in Louisville, Kentucky has a Stuart Historic Miniatures collection, 
30,000 figures from 180 different um, manufacturers. I don't know, it's cut off on the on my the monitor that we've got here for the thing. Um, which is almost as many figures as DT has Makers. painted. Pardon? Makers. Makers. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, actually, that's that's about three times as many miniatures as I've painted. A little bit less than three times. But uh, everyone says the Sado car look awesome. I hope so. Um, some of the first Space Marine miniatures, some of the first gaming miniatures that I converted, I converted to have. Uh, to look a bit like the Sada car from the David Lynch 1984 version of uh, Dune. So, definitely good. Uh, he says, significantly looking, uh, better looking uniforms, armor, and vehicles than the uh, 80s film. That's good. Uh, Vallejo air paints make good glazes due to their thin consistency. I had to do about a dozen layers of yellow over ochre to a color that I wanted. It's very lacquer like because of the layers. Yeah, you can build that up. If you've got if you've got some uh, decent translucency in there, you can get a lot of great sort of depth. Oh, Ashley said work has been so crazy recently. I uh, haven't painted anything since Saturday. Oh, boo, boo. I always say it's nice to paint every day. I don't get the chance though. That's not good. Um. Oh, Dave Pummel said the doggies have been rescued, apparently earlier today, oh. by some folks walking. They left a banner and calls themselves, Leona? The A-Team. The A-Team? Yep. By just Excellent. walking? The I thought they said it was too dangerous to walk. Did someone just decide, like... My guess is they just went. Was, they were just like, no! Like, it's okay, yeah. poisonous gas. Yeah, one of those things in the... They, they, were, they were in the exclusion zone, where they say, don't go because it's dangerous. And a whole bunch of people have gone, it's been dangerous for the last 30 days. Yeah. And nothing's happened. So we'll risk the hour run in and hour run back. I'd do that for my puppers. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Sumki's here. Hi, Sumki. How are you doing? Uh, Betsy says, uh, I painted some during, uh, during some work meetings yesterday. I love working from home. Fantastic. That is cool. I also enjoy working from home. It's nice sometimes when some of my work meetings involve painting as well. Where I'm actually talking about painting miniatures, which is definitely good. But cool. I think I just noticed. Yes, it is. Is it time? Eight o'clock. Dun dun dun. We can take a look at some minis. Let's check them out. Okay. Oh. Oh, cool. Agar has painted up a squad of Firefly Alliance soldiers. Ooh. Very cool. I wonder what what game are these for? I don't know. Have they been made? Are they? Oh God. Pun me. I have questions. <laughs> so many questions. But they're looking quite cool. I must admit, like when I like watching Firefly and um, Serenity, I never really paid much attention to the the <laughs> Alliance soldiers. They're kind of always like perfectly background. That's true. But, of course, everything was focused on the characters, right? It's yeah. definitely more of a character-intensive production. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, these are looking quite cool. I think at the beginning, these are what they look like. Yeah. No. No, no. Yeah. I have to go back and watch it now. Just so I can match it up. It's only at the, like, very beginning. Right. When they... Okay. Oh, like a, a, like a flashback to the, mm-hmm. the war? Yeah. Okay. And that kind of establishes how um, the two characters have met. <laughs> Why she calls right. him Captain all the time. Nice. Zoe and... Uh, Zoe, yeah. And Mal? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. But they look, uh, look great. Nice work, Egger. 
Very cool. Oh, uh, it's been, uh, it started, just started painting Blood Rage. Apparently I'm wrong. The train job episode shows the Alliance infantry, which I think that's like episode six. Anyway. Okay. Alliance infantry and that. And I'm pretty sure they, they do show up in the, um, in Serenity as well. Yeah. In the movie. Yeah, it's when they go to see Sadly, Mr. Um, the movie was not on Hulu or Netflix or wherever I watched because right. <laughs> it's different oh. licensing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, but Josh Potter says they look like the old Starship Troopers light armored mobile infantry, which are now owned by Rebel Minis. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. The, the, the helmet shape. It was kind of very much mobile infantry, but uh, but anyway, nice work. Back onto uh, Arts Fenrir um, from Blood Rage. This is very cool. This is the first model um, that Arts painted from this uh, this box set. I think I painted like the whole Kickstarter set for these back in 2016. Wow. Yeah, on commission. So somebody paid me to do it. That's a lot of models. I think it's like uh, eight warriors per clan, eight to ten warriors wow. per clan, and like six six clans, plus um, shaman and leaders and monsters and the gods, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, this looks great. I love the uh, like the the red eyes, the glowing red eyes. A great sort of addition there, but also the um, that brown and black fur is a great combination. Looks awesome on the legs where the two meet. But yeah, nice work, Art. Looking forward to seeing the rest of it. Maybe Art will treat us to a uh, a Roger Moore approach. Right. A couple of new minis each week. That'll be great. Oh, Ashton painted up. Uh, oh, here's some Robotech. Uh, VF1S Veritex from Robotech, Robotech Tactics. National painted about yeah. a year ago. So yeah. Anytime anyone paints like robots or Gunpla or anything, and they get all those crisp little lines. Little panel lines. Yeah. It is. A, I it is find pretty it very impressive. <laughs> amazing. But yeah, very uh, very detailed work, and you got to do. A, done a really cool job here Ashlyn I think um, this sort of makes me chuckle because the the mini can be the the jet the robot or halfway between the robot and jet but mm -hmm. so you can replace them on the table as you mm -hmm. as you transform them essentially so you take all your jets off and you put the the mid transforming versions and then the fully transformed versions. I mean, I guess that works, but how cool would it be if you painted like an actual Transformer mini? Right. Well, Not like the Transformers, but like if it could transform. Oh, actually transform? Like, yeah. yeah. That could be neat. Be very neat. But uh, yeah, nice work, Ashlyn. They look great. Pretty cool. Hopefully you'll get to paint some more of them soon. Uh, Betsy and Tim uh, Bowers are in the chat as well. Have uh, painted up some orc hunters. Now I think in this post, uh, Betsy said, "Have a guess which one was Tim's second miniature and his first basing attempt." Oh, wow. And I'm going to have to say that Betsy has done a wonderful job of uh, of teaching Tim because I couldn't tell you which one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, Betsy. You'll have to tell us. So wait, can you say it again? One was the first basing. So, so one of them, one of those minis, was Tim's second miniature. Wow. That he painted, and his first attempt at basing, on that same miniature. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't I'm, be able to tell you. Yeah. Like, My guess and, is and, unless he based all of these minis, which is a possibility right. too. <laughs> but uh, no, they look very cool. They look great. Um, it's the red one. Oh. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Go with that more, uh, slightly more traditional look. 
that uh, and of course Betsy is waiting for me to say something about the the blue skin and the orange yeah <laughs> nice work Betsy <laughs> very cool yeah they look really good uh, cool just just quickly I'm going to throw in there uh, Josh said uh, maybe we can be more productive for your hobby Ashlyn he was hoping and Ashlyn said uh she does school photography and got 39 schools to do this year. So I have to be in, os- in the office basically every day until January. But I can work from home all spring and summer. Yep. My daughters have got school photos coming up soon. Probably not photographing them, but I understand your pain. Uh, oh, they've almost said, funny you say that they look like Starship Troopers. They reused that armor in that episode. There's an interesting bit of trivia. Makes sense. But, uh, oh, and they also use it in Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on Very a budget cool. and you need some armor. Awesome. But yeah. Anyway, back to the mini. Uh, great work, Betsy and Tim. Very cool. Oh, Chris Gorka has painted Kira, the Dragon Princess, and Young Dragons for God Tier. So this is really nice. I think um, when I initially saw this, it was like, that's a really strange Daenerys. <laughs> the Queen of Dragons. This is a Dragon Princess. But uh, God Tier is a um, is a pretty cool uh, MOBA game, MOBA style game. So mother of all, no, what is it? I can't remember what it is. Multi, multi something. But basically it's a, an arena combat game where you build your team from different sources uh, and they have a, you've got a, a main character and then their minions. So it looks like uh, Kira here has dragons as minions, which is pretty cool. I think everybody would love to have dragons as minions. I'd love to have dragons as minions. Yeah. But uh, once again, Chris has done a great job here. It's uh, really nice work. Very cool. I painted up some God Tier for an article in Game Trade magazine coming out in December uh, about painting bones. But that was a so that was uh, Rattle Bones is the name of that character that I painted there. But no, nice work, Chris. Uh, Clive Mills, White Dragon, still work in progress. We're getting close to done. I think once you, uh, like, if you do a white dragon and you paint it white and then you just got the, the teeth and the mouth to pick out, you've got a little bit of basing to do, so it does very much look like you're almost there, Clive. It's coming along well. But that that head is very, uh, has a very dinosaur kind of feel. Yeah, I think I actually painted that sculpt as a, um, as the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Or one cool. similar to that sculpt. Yeah. It had a crest. Nice. I recall that. Excellent. And that looks looking good, Clive. Coming along really nicely. Excited to see completion. Just uh, quickly on the subject of white dragons, I saw a fantastic meme today of uh, the two characters from Breaking Bad. I can't remember their names. Walter White and Jesse. Is that who they are? Yeah. And Jesse's there saying, white dragons should breathe fire (laughs) because everything they hunt or everything in their environment that they they would be hunting is kind of immune to cold because they live in very cold areas. Right. So when they breathe cold air on them, it's like, they're like, I don't care. And just so it should be the like red dragons that breathe ice. Oh. I was like, hmm. that'd be cool. That makes sense. That's pretty fun. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, Dara McGregor has painted up some moonstone minis. Very cool. I've heard a lot, a lot of chatter about moonstone, but I haven't looked too closely into it. But uh, from what I can tell, it's just a very. Uh, has a lot of whimsy involved <laughs> in it. So I think it would be a uh, perfect thing for, mm-hmm. for us to paint one time. I think it would be fun. I like I like the uh, swordsman on the end there. Yep. Lots of feathers. I appreciate that. Yep. Wonderful feathers. The uh, That delightful mustache. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's literally described as a whimsical <laughs> fantasy skirmish game. Whimsical fantasy skirmish game. There we go. I was on the money. That's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, looking uh, looking very cool. Uh, do you think that the, the monk, oh, I, I don't want to call it a monk, but the Tetsubo there, it looks like, um, oh no, that's his shoe. Mm-hmm. It's like, like metal slippers. But for a second there, because of the way that the highlighting was on it, it felt like it was a ball, and I was wondering if it was like a helmet that had fallen off. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, I think these are looking great, Darren. Very cool. Nice work. Oh, Gavin continues to uh, paint up his uh, epic Dark Angels. So three companies of Dark Angels. That's a lot of models. That's 300 models. That's a lot. Three companies. Yep. These are very neat. And there's some, uh, I'm guessing there's some models uh, based on some more recent sculpts in there, but uh, yeah, they look great. Excellent work there, Gavin. So much painting. And then to go back with the basing as well. And, uh, paint all the basing in around it. But yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, awesome stuff. Nice one, Gav. Oh, Jason Kohler painted up the Whiz Kids Death Slard and the Black Slard. And of course, when I saw this on um, on the uh, group, I immediately read Slard as Salad. Death Salad. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want to eat the Death Salad. And I certainly don't want to eat the Black Salad. But uh, yeah, I think these are good. Um, Jason was wondering about it. They, what you can do to add a little bit more color to them, but uh, I, I kind of like them as they are. Yeah, well, I, one of the other shots that uh, he had in uh, this post had um, the black slard sort of turned a bit to the right, so you mm-hmm. could see more of the more of the body of him, uh, and he'd used a uh, like a green wash over the uh, the dark gray, and it looked good. I thought it was uh, just the the right amount of additional color on there. But uh, yeah, definitely picked it out well. But no, looking good, Jason. Very cool. Kelsey is working on it. Goddess, I think this has got a steel fist. I'm not sure. Um, but doing the. Uh, superhero landing pose so these uh the stormcaster turtles ride into battle on lightning so lightning strikes and they come down that so all those hammers are all those tassels there they're all still about to drop but uh yeah looking really good i'm loving the the blue glow that you've got going on in the uh in the base there and around the the runes on the um on the blade Looking very cool. Nicely done. Excellent work, Kelsey. Hope that when you do the uh, the, the head, that your head has a little bit of those has those blue, glowing blue eyes. That would be great. Uh, Michael painted up a dwarf miner champion. Start off a unit of dwarf miners. Very cool. This model is from the uh, like ninety two, I think ninety two, ninety three. Um. But yeah, looking good. I think uh, if you go along and match that with the rest of the unit of miners with the uh, that red as your uh, color to tie them all together, it's going to look very cool. You got some very neat painting there, Michael. Nice work. Michael Gonzalez has painted up Parademons, DC game. This is, is this from the... Uh, the game by from uh, Night Models, I think, possibly. Yes, I believe so. Um, but yeah, these are looking very cool. I don't know. I don't know the Parademons at all. I'm not sure. Not a big. Uh, not completely up on my DC stuff, but uh, I am enjoying that green skin, that green glowing, uh, glowing face, and the um, and those wings. Super fluorescent there. Looking good, and the panel, uh, well, the shading the underneath the panels, too. 
Yeah, the red eyes as well. Through those goggles. The goggles, they do nothing. But uh, yeah, I love the, uh, the shading that you've got going on as well on those armor plates. But yeah, excellent. Oh, sorry, just quickly, uh, Dave Hummel said uh, he was looking forward to doing a picture like this for his 28 mil Space Marines. So going back to those 300 epic Space Marines from Gavin. Very cool. But yeah, nice work, Michael. Look forward to see more. Oh, Nick Anderson is working on a barbarian. <laughs> this, uh, oh, Barbian, sorry. Barbian. I think this is a, an Infinity model. I wonder if this is Fat Yuan, who is a, a character. But uh, yeah, beautiful work. And we know how, how small these minis are. Yeah. And uh, so if this is an Infinity model, it's got the, all the uh, hallmarks of it. So um, I think you might be, but yeah, beautiful work there, Nick. I mean, that, uh, those gradients that you're getting on those armor plates there. The gun looks fantastic. And of course, the belly. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> oh, uh, Jason said that uh, the uh, parademons are the minions of Dark Side. They said the minions of Apocalypse. Oh, Dark Side of Apocalypse. Okay. But yeah, looking good. Uh, Sebastian, uh, so work in progress. A lot of work in progress this week. Very cool. Uh, Calypso from Malifo. Yeah, this is looking really good. I'm loving that, uh, like the leaking oil. Oh yeah, that's nice. Coming out nice. from the on those plates. Looks greasy. Fun? Creepy? Greasy. Greasy? I, like I was with all the say, leaking oil and everything? Yeah. Like if you touched it, you'd leave a smudge. Yeah, you would, definitely. Definitely. You'd have to scrub for weeks to get that, <laughs> that oil out. But I can imagine it being a little bit squeaky as well. Oh, yeah, it definitely has. And, like, the colors, too, remind me a lot of, like, vintage kind of pickup truck colors. Yeah, yep, definitely. Like a, a farm truck. Yeah. Yep. Just kind of adds to that that character. Yep, uh, that, that hard-working, uh, hard-working robot feel. Yeah. Yep. yep. That no. robot would give you a classic Coca-Cola can. Glass bottle, Glass bottle, whatever and bottle. Then, as it's handing it to you, <laughs> it, would, it would twist it, but <laughs> then it would accidentally crush it, and then go, "Oh!" That robot reach knows for another one. how to use a jukebox. <laughs> is all I'm saying. <laughs> Excellent. No, great work there, uh, Sebastian. Looks really nice. I love the um, the texture on those uh, claws as well. Really beautifully done. Excellent. No worries. Last one. <gasps> Last one. Sean. Sean Gleason. Are you still in the chat, Sean? Um, maybe. Maybe. Um. Apparently, Facebook had a thing where they, like, disconnected it. Okay. For a little bit. So some of our Facebook watchers jumped off. But once I checked it, it's fine now. Okay. So right. I don't really know exactly what happened, but... Uh, hopefully, Sean has made it back. But, um, Warmaster Titan... In early progress. Yep. This is very cool. Great. This thing is huge as well. You can see how many, uh, like, you have got to take those paint pots and stack them up. So the paint pots don't even come up to the, the knee. Not even the, the taller contrast paint pots. So the knee's at about that level. And then there's another three times that on top. Looks very cool. Uh, Jason said gets a very Eggman vibe from the colors. I think that was talking about Sebastian's <laughs> Malifaux model. But uh, no, I'm liking the um, the heraldry you've got going on. Got some classic uh, classic hot rod flames there on those. Uh, That's very important. Helps it go fast as well. Yep. And of course, because the uh, the minis in this game, okay, you can see on the on the base there. There's like a little. Uh, five-gallon drum. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the person standing next to that. And then the size of the Titan. That's cool. Huge! Huge. Yep. Absolutely massive. But I was looking great, Sean. Excited to see uh, how this keeps coming along. 
I'm also curious as to how long it took you to assemble that. So I, I don't have the War Master, but I have a Warlord Titan, which is a bit smaller than that. It's up, it goes up to about the... just above the level of the head there. But I think that's a lot of work. So each time I think about getting it out, it's like, will I have enough time to finish this in one sitting? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. But not that I have to, but... Someone says, are yep. there guns on his knees? It looks like it. Or yep. at least, like, yep. on his shins. There are guns on the knees. Guns on the knees, guns beside the head, just and then a little bit out, and then further out, and then up the top, and then in between those ones at the top, there's a like rack, a missile rack, and then there'll be two guns suspended, like hanging down on arms, which will be fantastic. But yeah, excellent work, Sean. Looking forward to seeing the rest. Now I'm back to it. You've been working on uh, building up the yellow. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. That's looking really neat. Got the yellow coming to there. I've only been using the colors that have come with the kit. All right. Very minimal mixing, um, trying to not do anything too complicated. And I really like how it turned out. Yeah, it's yeah. looking really good. So, But I am going to add some shifter on her uh, gold armor there, as promised. Okay. I'm not going <laughs> to dip her by the ankle, but I'll... You, we'll give her a little shifter protection. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her a little... On, a, on, on the armor. Right. I'm mixing a little bit of um, the Vallejo Tan into, where is it? Uh, I just had it right here. There it is. The uh, Sunny Skin Tone, which is a bit more of a, like an orangey sort of skin tone there. Um, so yeah, just mixing that, mix, ugh, mixing that in for base color. Um, just because I was a little bit worried that the uh, that sunny skin tone wouldn't have had um, sort of a strong enough coverage to get a good base coat over that um, over that face over that black um, primer too quickly, so just by mixing in a little bit of um, that tan, it gives it great coverage. Because that tan's got very good coverage in itself, but usually I'm mixing um, mixing two colors. Yeah, you can get increase the generally increase the opacity. Yeah, I think that was the uh, most difficult part of working with all the yellows today is that the yellows really don't like being opaque. Yep. Um, so trying to find they do that, tend to avoid it. Yeah. That balance. On the back of his head here, I'm just doing um, down around his neck. I'm going to be painting it with skin tone. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit lighter so that when I go in and paint his hair, I can then fade it back down into there. Somebody says, if you're going to get through with the Infinity models, you'd better hurry up. You haven't even finished two. <laughs> We're at half an hour. It's been a good, uh, good run through so far. bit 
bright on the screen there, but you can start to see the some tonal work happening on the face. Mix in a little bit of uh, ivory. Start highlighting that up. There we go. I'll just take this slowly up. Well, that was what I was going to say as well. I brought in the um, Warhammer. Um, oh, sorry, not the Warhammer. My bad. Mine's, my mind's got the link. The um, I'm just going to hold it up there. There we go. Okay. So we just look at the big picture. Uh, so this is the War Paints Air Starter Set from the Army Painter. So this is the one I talked about last week. That has um, it's got twelve. No, it's got eleven. Eleven. Yep, 11 at the uh, 18 millimeter size, milliliter size, and uh, one 100 milliliter airbrush primer, matte gray primer included there. It's a hefty set, so we will be sending this out to somebody who wins the giveaway. And that's on the is that po pinned on the group? Yep. So pinned in the uh, Penny Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Uh, go and check out the pinned post. And what do people have to do, Leona? They have to like the post oh. and then comment their go-to paint colors. So is that one where I'd go there and say, what color, yeah. what color would I say? You would say charred brown. Charred brown. Right. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> yes, that's exactly... That's exactly what they have to do. Okay. What they would do. And then we will be picking a winner uh, November 10th, I believe. That's what November I said. November 10th? Cool. Because that's three. I think the Thursday is November 11th. Oh, excuse me. 11th. Cool. That's about three weeks from now. Okay. So. Very cool. I think that'll be uh, that will be neat, and of course you get um, extra chances if you uh, say that your favorite color is charred brown. <laughs> Instant win! No, I'm just joking. No. <laughs> I'm just joking as well. We actually have uh, another giveaway. Oh, okay. On the page as well. That's the two thousand member. Oh, yeah. the little minis cool. giveaway and then actually we have the winner for the purple dragon we're just doing a lot of giveaways aren't is we announced today okay and i haven't announced it yet okay think, um can you announce it now sure a little sneak peek <laughs> yeah <laughs> The winner is James Denkoff. Oh, James Denkoff. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. I haven't seen James this, e uh, this evening in the chat. Uh. Correct. Hmm. So I'll post it in the group. Okay. Um, and then um, we'll probably have another miniature giveaway in November. So cool. look out for that as well. Sounds good. Very cool. Congratulations, James. I'm sure you will enjoy the purple dragon. This is the one you painted, right? It is, with mushrooms. Oh, cool. And the poison. Excellent. Very nice. I'm going to go through the fun part now of painting his head and uh, facial hair. Oh, his hair and facial hair. So. Here we go. And then 
as we get onto the back of the, the head there, mm -hmm. I'm going to mix some of the um, sunny skin tone in with the, of course the colour I've chosen for the hair is charred brown. I had to. I'm uh, just mixing in some of the sunny skin tone and I'll just um, slowly fade that down into into that so it looks like uh, you start to see the, the skin through the very 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 short hair it's always a it's a such a simple kind of technique to do but it always looks really effective and you just start to go sort of back and forth between the the two colors to make your make sure your fade is looking good. All right, I think she's pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any more I can really do without messing her up. <laughs> In including the shifter. No, the shifter? I put the shifter on her. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It is. You got 23 minutes. Can yeah. you paint another miniature? I could paint a whole another mini. Uh, we have a whole box. <laughs> we do. Mm -hmm. You get a head start on next week's mini. Okay. Excellent. She is on the spinner. Top stuff. I'm just going to grab something blindly. Oh, that's what we painted last week. Yeah. Oh, cool. In the uh, the box of opportunity? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what we've got. Have you ever seen anyone use colored pencil for edge highlighting? I saw someone who claimed to do it and then used a matte varnish to keep it from rubbing off. So I wouldn't say colored pencil, but I have seen a lot of people who repaint like Barbie dolls and that kind of stuff, which is also typically done with some acrylics and materials that you might also use for um, mini painting. I've seen them use watercolor pencils and pastels and then use a um, a Mr. Super Clear or something like that in order to set it. Um, I've seen, uh, actually there are, um, sort of color pencil type things that are sold as, uh, like weathering pencils. So I have seen those where you can, um, like if you've got, uh, want to do like rust chipping or that kind of thing. Yeah. So if you've got a, a light color, like a yellow or an orange, or that kind of thing, or pale blue, you can then get that rust pencil and run it along the edge. So almost like you would do a, a paintbrush, but you gotta, it's firmer, you can push it and you can yeah, do little and scratches the, and um, stripes and stuff like that. I imagine the colored pencil um, itself would be a softer um, colored yep. pencil. Pencil, oh, I can't speak, it's late. <laughs> um, colored pencil. But a, a softer colored pencil or a water, yeah, Josh Potter says water colored pencil I've heard of. Yep. Um, Watercolor pencil, I know, has been used a bit because it's a little softer. You have, you have to build up a lot from what I've heard. Right. So um, you have to really kind of work um, at building up those layers to get what you want. But overall, it has a very soft effect, very, very much like pastels or even even like airbrushing, it's just a lot more precise. Right, yep. Hang on, our friends at uh, Mini Masterworks, they have a set of um, weathering pencils. So if you wanna check them out, um, I think they've probably got, on their website, they might have links to uh, some work they've done with those, um, or they check out their Facebook page or their Instagram. Um, I've also, one thing that I've seen quite a bit is, uh, People using uh, like graphite pencils, mm -hmm. just straight up like 2B pencils. Um, so if you wanted to get something, uh, particularly like on tank tracks, 
um, or anything you want to have a really dark, like cast iron kind of look, um, you can either, if you've got a tank track, you can um, run the, the pencil over the edges um, of it. So just like over the edge of the uh, the textured tracks and it'll catch the, the um, graphite. All right. Um, or you can scrape it down and make a little pile and then use your finger to, to rub it onto those. Honestly, I think it would be areas. really useful to use for like if you wanted a really detailed eye um, because you'd have that much more stability and control and because you have to build up to get the color. I would be very interested to see like okay. how um, how useful that would be for maybe drawing pupils or that kind of stuff. Maybe not on like a mini, you know, this small. Because yeah. I, I don't think... I think you would have the control and you'd have that nice fine tip, which would be great. But because you have to build up the color, I don't think it would be as effective overall. To right. the, And I, yeah. I don't think anyone would have the time or the patience to just <laughs> boop the same place. That's, yeah. a, that's a lot of... Um, that's a lot of chances to not have something work out. To, to miss one of the spots. Um, yeah. But on some of those larger minis where you really get to see the eyes are those very anime type minis where they have that chibi appearance and the very large eyes. I think um, it might be used to get a very kind of um, nice dramatic gradient, right. um, which could lend itself well to that style. Yeah. That could be interesting. I saw someone recolor a Funko Pop with the okay. uh, repaint Funko Pop with watercolor pencils okay. and acrylics. Interesting. Um, Did it take it took them a while. It took them a while. Um, just build up a really nice. Depth. Yeah, they said it took many layers, but I mean, it looked very nice. Cool. So I don't know how that would really translate to a much smaller scale, but. I would be I'd be interested to see if anyone decides to do it or has pictures of someone who has. Yeah. Cool. Oh, there we go, Josh. Yep, you can use just regular graphite pencil for edge damage if you want to see metal. Sealant is a must though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. if you're just drawing a picture with graphite, sealant is a must. Sealant is a must. Yeah. <laughs> It has been a long time since I've done any uh, any drawings that would be worthy of of <laughs> sealing. I just think about how, like, when I was a poor art student, we'd use hairspray. Oh yeah, that was the go-to. You mean there was something else? <laughs> <laughs> There's apparently something professional that can actually work long term, but I didn't know what right. that was. It's called VO five, right? Uh. <laughs> So for the uh, for his webbing and kit there, I'm just painting this all in black. And I think um, if I have the time, we'll see. I'll uh, do some pop some uh, blue into the highlights on the black there. Going with the blue, of course, because he has the those orange flashes on him. Touch up his base a little bit, just so I'm ready when the uh, when it's time for the spinner. I just realized as well that I needed to paint his boots black, or at least the lower part. <laughs> kind of looks like he's got gaiters on. Should we give him Crocs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry, my bad. No, not Crocs. But you know what I mean with gaiters, the mm -hmm. material wrapped around the calf kind of thing. Or the, in this case, armor plates or what have you. There we go, coming along. I think that black is just helping it to 
sort of stand out. There's a lot of um, light and mid-tones that we've got going on. So, You know, I actually mm -hmm. think I have watercolor pencils at home yeah. that I could bring in and we could try. I just don't know if uh, how they work. I know the guy that I saw doing the uh, painting of the Funko Pop used like a clear setting spray as a primer. Okay. I don't know yep. how it would work if we just like did it on the paint, but could try. I think well, if you do the same thing, just um, because you just bring on a, a matte varnish, really. True. But it um, and a, a matte varnish is going to create like a micro texture. That grit. Yep. So much better. Don't do a gloss varnish if you're going to do. Um, the pencils, I think. Bling. There we go. Should I do the eyes? Do it. I did it. I guess I gotta, gotta make gotta, a match. Gotta do it. Gonna make the eyes match. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> Let's see. Can I get in there? Actually, what I need to do first is just need to darken up those um, eye sockets. Get a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the tan. Just because it's going to help the, the eyes stand out more. I think one of the advantages of doing the eyes with a super sharp pencil is that if your depth perception is a little bit off, mm -hmm. but your targeting is good, like, so when you do it with a brush, I'm going to show you on my thumbnail there, if your targeting is good, you'll get the, the dot. If your depth, depth perception is good as well, you'll just get the dot that you want. But if it's not too good, you might go too far and the brush will sort of Splay out a little bit, so you get a larger area. But when you've got a, a pencil, you're not going to get that. It's just going to go dot and stop the pencil. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make does that sound sensible? That sounds sensible. Okay. It might work that way. I said you'd have that stability, but the building up that that layering might not yeah. work quite as efficient. Uh. I am dead. <laughs> then get one eye looking good, and then the other eyeball. Ends up looking like the eyeball has exploded and it's dripping down the cheek. Yeah, I definitely have one eye that looks better than the other eye, but it's not it's not supremely noticeable. I just have a favorite eyeball. Right. Luke, the eyes have it. <laughs> Who was that? Is that some key or Josh? It was some key. Right. <laughs> and Josh says, "Beware the eyes of March." <laughs> I I Captain. These are good. You got eyes. Nah, you guys. I got. I got nothing. I got nothing. Ah. Uh, yeah. Damn, I missed that. <laughs> okay. So if you do uh, happen to paint the uh, eyeball down over it onto the the cheek, just come back, paint the cheek again with that um, eye socket color, and then highlight it back up again. I guess there is something to be said for painting the eyes first. Such a 
teeny tiny bit. I'm not even on camera doing it. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. I get some blue. I'm gonna try and do this fairly quickly. We got ten minutes. Go, go, go. You can do it. Yeah. So take a little bit of black, a little bit of the dark Prussian blue, mix that in, and a little bit of ivory, which will mostly react there with the um, the black to give it a, a bit of a gray. So now I've got like a blue gray. All right. Yep. I can just uh, do a little bit of light over brushing on the black. So I'm just doing an initial layer and then I'll add a little bit more um, ivory for the the upper highlights. I think I like about doing it this way as well for the, the blue is it gives it a bit more of a it has a even though a backpack is a very sort of utilitarian modern utilitarian thing. Um, it can look, if you do it all like leather and cracked straps and that kind of thing, it can make it look very old. Mm -hmm. But using the blue highlighting just keeps it very much in a, in a sci-fi futuristic kind of look. I think, at least. I just put a couple of highlights on the, the straps on the shoes there. With the things that are lowered down on the, the body, I'm not going to worry about going back for the for a stronger highlight on them. I'll save that for the things that are up and around the top. He's also carrying a black pistol there, so to keep it separate from all of the um, the leather or cloth or synthetic materials, I won't use the blue to highlight that. I'll just do that with a gray. You got a little bit of it there on the screen. black and even more of the ivory. I think I was just put the ivory straight into the blue and give it a bit of a, a greenish tinge. Mm -hmm. But because I've got the black in there as well. It's keeping, still keeping it nice and nice and blue, or blue gray at least, rather than going green. Uh, spin that. You start to see those highlights come out. Nice. Just using the crispness of the the sculpt here with a just running my brush on the, along the side of those. Those raised areas. You always get that funny thing with the these fabric band aids, where that one thread comes loose and dangles. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, that was one thing I was going to mention, just quickly. Um, did you see the trailer for Cowboy Bebop? I did. What did you think? I'm super excited. Did I really you? want to re... I think I mentioned this before, but I really, really want to re-watch it, because I do not have a good memory of it other than enjoying it. Right. 
Not as in, like, not a good memory as in, like, I didn't like it or anything. As in, like, I was in middle school and my memory is hazy. (laughs) Also, it came on on Adult Swim, like, the wee hours in the morning. Nice. And I remember when we we painted some of the minis from the game. Yes. That uh, I knew nothing about it. Yeah. Except that I'd heard the title. Watch it. And I still know nothing about it. But I watched that trailer and it was like, that looks like fun. It's like <laughs> jazzy <laughs> and and space themed and vaguely westerny and like yep. there's there's a they're bounty hunters, so it's cool. Right. It's a lot of fun. That's what it is. Yep. Huh? Oh, apparently they're dubbing it with the original dub cast. That's cool. Oh. Okay. Excellent. Oh my goodness. Josh and Dave and Simki going back and forth with all the uh, <laughs> the side jokes. I hadn't seen those. But now. Now I am. Very cool. Okay. So one thing I've noticed with this... Um, Looks a bit, you get a bit more contrast on screen, but having put those, um, the black in there, the um, armor plates, the ivory armor plates aren't quite popping as much in real life. So I think if I had a bit more time, I'd go back and uh, just highlight those a bit more. So let's see. Do I have time? Do I have two minutes? You have three? I have three. Woohoo! Okay. Three whole minutes. Three whole minutes. Let's just go for straight. Um, oh, let's get it on the camera. Go straight ivory. Get a bit more pop. Yep, I think it's going to do it. So basically, Cowboy Bebop is Firefly. No. It has better music. Quite different. It has what? Better music? (laughs) (laughs) I think Firefly goes more into the Western side of things, whereas Cowboy Bebop doesn't it do, right. it goes a little bit more <laughs> Dave I could see both series being in the same universe they definitely could exist in the same universe that's for sure I don't know there's there's a word I'm looking for to describe more of like the the tone and vibe of Cowboy Bebop All right. as opposed to Firefly um cyberpunk thank you <laughs> Brotonaut coming in, saving the day. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has more of a cyberpunk feel. Okay. There we go. True. That's that's getting to what I was trying to get to. In the uh, the trailer I saw was it seemed to have a bit more of a um, kind of a seventies uh, mod squad kind of. Yes, very seventies, very but, uh, like. It's just it's just a different tone. Yeah. Um, it did seem quite cool, and I'm I was, I'm curious now to find out whether the um, whether they just did a lot of that. Obviously, they did it to give it a very comic book, graphic novel kind of feel. But whether or not it's going to follow through to the through series. The movie. Like, I, oh, it's a series. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I hope it does a little bit. Not enough to detract. Not enough. N- not. Like um, not for a whole episode. Yeah, not for a whole episode, and not quite to the degree of like um, Scott Pilgrim. Like Scott right. Pilgrim, I think for for Scott Pilgrim, it was great. Like that was exactly what it should have been. Yep. But I don't think that tone that kind of leaned into the fourth wall is heavy with comic books and video games and what 
would be appropriate for right. Cowboy Bebop. Okay. However, I do hope they keep the 70s kind of artsy, um, very uh, music kind of... Focused. Focus because right. I yeah. think that'll stick to her to the tone of the series, okay. from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that would be very refreshing to see. Um, it, it's, I think I find it like I don't want to say it's not a dark series because it, I, I think it touches on some darker concepts, and it's definitely you know, bounty hunters in space and there's violent things that happen. Right. But it's definitely not what I would describe as grimdark at all. Sure. And I I hope that that kind of colorful um, feel is carried through. All right. I think it could be good. I am interested in it now. Yeah. But having seen that trailer, the trailer was really well done. It's really fun. And I hope that it is all the fun things that I vaguely <laughs> remember <laughs> <laughs> from nice. like 3 a.m. sleepovers. Um, okay. Time to pop my pocket slam dude in there. I just noticed a little bit of paint. Face. Look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it'll be Bebop fun. I think it will be too. I think it will definitely. I think it's going to have an awesome soundtrack. Um, and I think that it's going to have its moment to shine. Yep. So, I'm excited for it. Cool. Oh, Sean Gleason says hello again. Hello, Sean. <laughs> You're back. Great. Oh, look. Those don't too, look too shabby next to each other. No, I think they look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some uh, some great uh, great colors going on there. I think that's um, tried to follow the box. <laughs> yep. Have you got blue in that uh, in the black? Yep. Yep. Because it's a it's like a blue black going on there, yeah. and I had a blue. Ooh. So that is what I use. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that looks really good. I kept mine. And mine's much more subtle. Than black. <laughs> it's, uh, like it's definitely black without the. Doesn't really have a lot of the blue in it, but it's just a. Uh, it's kind of crazy that we both ended up with that there. Yeah, I liked a little bit more blue because against that orange, I thought it looked nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, if we're gonna be colorful, might as well just. Yep. Go with the colorful. Lean into it. I mean, looking at the cover art here, it's very orange, very... There was some source lighting of green that I completely missed, but nope. that's okay. Yeah. She just doesn't have the lights on right now. It's good. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> All good. Uh, very cool. As I go to look again. <laughs> nope. Uh, Dave Holmes' yeah. awesome job, guys. They look fantastic. Uh, Bronto Notes says the minis look great, and they could be characters in Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, technically. <laughs> that could be fun. They kind of follow the uh, the general vibe of that. Excellent. Definitely. And Josh says, wow, looking good. I feel like I'm going to go and I'm going to rewatch Cowboy Bebop, and I'm, a, I'm either going to be like, yes, or I'm going to be like, I don't remember things it was, it was accurately. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't I go and it. I won't go and watch the old series. I just I'm the gonna uh, I'm gonna go some at some point in the near future. I'm gonna have to find at least like the first three episodes or something and watch them so I can come back on the show and be like, this is my memory. <laughs> <laughs> um. Excellent. That's cool. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, it yep. is the end of the night. We have painted the things. Yep. Leona, what are we painting next week? We're painting up some monsters. From, some monsters. Um, uh, fire, fire zero, zero fire, or something like that. Anyway, they're very creepy, 
creepy Very monsters. Creepy crawly monsters <laughs> to get us in the Halloween spirit. Woo! Fantastic. Um, All right, because that'll be before Halloween, Halloween, won't it? Yep. Yeah. Should we, should we costume, costume it up? Are we in a costume? <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> I I have, have a to. I have a lab coat at home, okay. just waiting for <laughs> me to wear it for like the third year in a row. Yeah, I mean you can you can. <laughs> no, I I've got some stuff for a costume that isn't um, that isn't a dude in a lab coat. I have not yet figured out what I want to be for Halloween this year because I don't know if I can top last year uh, for yeah. those who did, did not follow my Instagram for the past year. I was a um, anglerfish. It was beautiful. Yeah. And I just, I don't know what can what can top that. I have to really dig deep. The Gordon's fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be an easy easy costume as well. It would be. It would be. I have to think about it. I'll have to. I have one that involves a mask, not like Ooh. a full face mask, but a Ooh. like a COVID mask. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I had some ideas. I don't know. I have to see what I can get in time. Yeah. Usually, I try not to spend a whole lot of money because okay. I feel like it's not it's not like cosplaying where you're like go. I feel like Halloween is about ingenuity. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Cool. All right then. Well, on that note. <laughs> so. In a sheet as a ghost. Is that what you're going to do? Exactly. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we will see you all next week. We will see you all next week. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye. Bye.